Hey everybody, this is John from JohnLumber.com and John Lumber Digital on Facebook. Here with another edition of my video blog where I answer a few of your questions about Facebook marketing and content marketing. And uh, before I get there, however, you know, I like to share stories uh, to give you a little something uh, that I've learned from that maybe you can learn from as well. And I often talk about my experience as a parent and kind of bring it on back to, to marketing. Um, so I had a, a good example of that this list last weekend. Our middle son, we have three sons. Our middle son is eight, turning nine. And uh, we're a big baseball family, okay? And we had Little League tryouts last Sunday. And I'm, I'm the coach. Uh, our oldest son is moving up a level. Middle son's going to take a spot, but he's going to be a young kid, eight-year-old on the 9-10 team. Okay, so we're having tryouts. Really windy day. Uh, and uh, one, one of the events where they're trying out is that take fly balls, okay, off of a machine, shooting it out there. And they need to catch it, throw it in. Coaches assess, you know, how good they are. And this thing was, you know, more or less a formality for us because I'm going to draft my son, period. But the league also wants to make sure that he's ready. And the kid is really, really good. But he is eight, okay. Ball flies out there, hits him in the eye. He tracks it perfectly, moves his glove, hits him in the eye. He was wearing sunglasses. I rush out to him. He's a mess, blood everywhere. Ends up, we, we end up taking him to, to the ER, 10 stitches, okay? Really tough, really tough. So as a parent, first thing, is my concern is health. Is he going to be okay? Uh, no major problems, all right? Just the stitches, 10 stitches. But um, then you think about mentally, how, how is he going to rebound from this? So, um, and, you know, that's the kind of thing where I, I can compare it now to business and things as an adult in general. How do you overcome adversity? How, what, what happens when obstacles are thrown your way? What happens when you fail? What do you do? How do you react? And so I was really concerned about these things. Because first of all, I know he loves baseball. And I know he's really good at it. And selfishness as a parent, as a dad aside that I want to share that kind of stuff with him, um, if he loves it, I want him to, to con continue to enjoy it. So um, that was my bit first concern. And um, when my wife's carrying him into the ER and just bleeding and pain and screaming, um, one of the things he said was, uh, I don't want to play baseball anymore. <laughs> and uh, sorry. And as a dad, that, that kind of broke my heart because of these things. And, um, but, the, but here's the thing. It, that, that was an emotional response. And I was not going to talk baseball with him at all. And my wife wasn't either. We weren't going to even bring it up. That night he watched a baseball movie. The next day he watched a baseball movie. Uh, I started talking with him about, you know, how he felt and what he wanted to do and this and that. And he decided he wanted to get back on that horse. And he also wanted to finish what he started and complete that assessment and those tryouts which I thought took a ton of guts. So this week we've been going out every day, just throwing a tennis ball around, taking ground balls. We're taking it really easy, letting him throw a baseball where I don't throw it back, this and that. So really, really proud of the kid. Um, but here's my point. Up until now, he's, his life has been pretty easy. This is the, his first major injury. Baseball has always come very easily for him. Um, He's just a naturally good baseball player. But now, they have this huge obstacle and this adversity. Most kids, I, I got to tell you, if you don't love baseball, most kids would have quit right there. I can totally see why you would. And, and there has to be a certain mental makeup as well. You know, what's the payoff for continuing? So, you know, and he, he is taking it on. And I compare this to business. We are going to fail. We are going to encounter obstacles. How are we going to react to those obstacles? So um, I felt like this was a, a really good life lesson and showing how important it is to, to have these obstacles in life, to see what we're made of. Uh, because to be quite honest with you, 
his life has been very easy up until now. And to have something like this, I think, really builds character. Um, so for a kid, it builds character. For a business person, it builds character as well when we encounter obstacles. And I've, I've seen a completely different look in his eye this week, not just because <laughs> there's 10 stitches above it. There's a, certain, there's a different amount of focus and a different perspective that you have once you've fought through something like that. Okay? So that, that's uh, my, my story real quick to open. Hope uh, and I'm I'm gonna I'm, I I have to write a blog post about this as well so that will be coming so stay tuned. All right so once again uh, this is the ask me anything portion. Once a week I will be uh, putting up a post on my Facebook page John Loomer Digital it says ask me anything and that's your chance to ask me whatever you would like about Facebook or content marketing and I'll answer as many as I can probably just a couple today due to the fact that I just spent five minutes. So first question. Alyssa asks, I've read that Facebook may have quietly changed cover photo rules to allow for certain calls to action while still disallowing contact info and like text. I'm wary of making changes just yet. What's your take? Um, yes, yes and no. Uh, yes, they have changed the cover photo rules and, um, and actually just about everything is allowed now. Uh, let me bring it up. Cover photo. All covers are public. This means that anyone who visits your page will be able to see your cover. Covers can't be deceptive, misleading, or infringe on anyone else's copyright. You may not encourage people to upload your cover to their personal timelines. Covers may not include images with more than 20% text. Pretty simple. So what this means is um, you can have uh, pricing information. You can have call, calls to action. You can have contact info. All that said, you still can't be over 20%. Okay, so what, what's my feeling on it? I mean, I, I see a lot of people excited and throwing parties over this. I don't know. Um, what I don't want is for you to make your cover photo look like an ad. Facebook had, a, had that as a rule before, and it's one that while um, no one was really clear on how they policed it, same with images in general, I agreed with the general sentiment. I can't stand cover photos that look like a big ad, okay? So I hope you don't do that. That said, you still got 20%. You still have the 20% rule. So you can't get too crazy anyway. And I think, I honestly think you should be using that 20% to be tell, tell more about who you are in your story. If you can do that, tell your story with an image and then use that 20% for a call to action or I think for brick and mortar, having your address or your phone number in there might not be a bad idea. Your website address might not be a bad idea. Um, so there's certainly ways to get creative. That said, let's not get crazy is really my suggestion. Let's not make these look like an ad. Um, but yes, this does open things up a little bit uh, for some creativity. All right. Thanks, Alyssa. All right. Kathy has a good question. I find that unless I'm advertising, using promoted posts, or giving something away, my page engagement drops significantly. Is there another way to lift engagement without always dipping into my pocket? Kathy, good question. All right, understand. Normally, when you post, you're going to reach 10 to 16 percent of your fans ish. Okay, the more fans you have, the greater that engagement will be. By the mere nature of promoting a post, you are reaching people who you would not have previously reached, mainly because. When they come online, uh, if they would have previously missed it, when they come online, they will see it. All right. So first of all, let's make it clear that you're not. It's not that you're just getting engagement now because you're promoting it. Uh, you're you're getting engagement because you're able to reach more people who wouldn't have seen your post otherwise. Okay. Uh, and the second thing is, by the by the nature of contests and whatnot, yes, you're gonna get more engagement out of those. But let's be careful about this. It's fluff, often fluff engagement that isn't all that valuable, okay? Um, and depending on your goals, it's, it's, it's temporary. And that's, that's what contests are all about. It gets people excited, they want a deal, they want to get something free. Those aren't necessarily gonna be the people who are buying from you in the future. So yes, your engagement absolutely will go down when you're not promoting anything or when you're not running a contest. First of all, accept that. And then second of all, try to, you have to learn from what is working, what's not, when you're not promoting posts. 
and when you're not running a contest. So you got to ask questions and involve your audience. You know, status updates work pretty well sometimes just in terms of, of pure engagement. I mean, look at this Ask Me Anything post. That's where I get a lot of engagement. You know, mix it up with photos and videos. Do not stray from your, your, your voice. Don't get crazy posting fluff content just so that you can get engagement. You need to have a purpose behind it. So my, my main point here is that don't freak out over having to have the same engagement that you had with a promoted post or with the contest. You're not going to have that, and you shouldn't think you should. Um, but you need to follow your stats, follow your metrics, understand what works, time of the day, type of content, and, uh, and go from there. All right, hope that helps. All right, we have time for one more question. Okay. Uh, now the name, I'm sorry if I'm going to mess this up. Do Lally. Not sure about that. Is Facebook going to work for a business that A, isn't a brand, and B, doesn't want to pay to advertise anything? Uh, a, not really sure what I know. What you mean by that isn't a brand. You might mean not a big brand. I don't know. <clears throat> I consider myself a brand. I consider anyone who is a company a brand, anyone who's in any type of business a brand. So yes, it can work for anyone who is a brand, personal, small business, big business, doesn't matter. Okay, so that's that's A. B, uh, doesn't want to pay av to advertise anything. Well, I'm going to ask you this. If you have a business and you're not paying anything to advertise anywhere, whether it's Facebook, or elsewhere, you're probably destined to fail. Uh, depending on the nature of your business, um, I say probably, there's always going to be an exception, but uh, you, all, you need to be willing to pay a little bit, I think, if you're a business, to, to reach more people and to, to get the word out about your business and let people know about your, your deals and your programs, and your services, whatever they are. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a very, there's a small percentage of people who can be really successful on Facebook with, without advertising at all. That said, I I think there's this perception out there that either you don't advertise at all, or you're spending thousands of dollars every month. Just, just get out of that. Like I I have a, an ad that's running every day with a max of two dollars every day. You can do that. You could do one dollar max every day. Um, so I think we need to shift our thinking there. If you don't want to advertise on Facebook, can you be successful? Sure. It's a different level of success and the growth will be slower. You have to set your expectations accordingly, but you can still succeed. If you want to succeed more, you should expect to spend a little bit, but that doesn't just apply to Facebook. That implies that anything business related, you need to invest. You need to invest. You need to spend a little bit of money to get something in return. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, it's the kind of question I get a lot. A lot of people who are scared of Facebook advertising, refuse to do it. And I think that's, need, that's something we need to get past. Okay, hope that helps. Uh, just a quick reminder, tomorrow, big day, uh, my webinar. I've got three sessions running, one that is still currently open. Uh, make sure you check it out. If you haven't signed up already, johnloomer.com slash webinar. All right. Hope that was helpful for you. Till next time, do awesome things. I'm out.